We are a very small school district, 2.8 square miles, and 1,800 students total in here. We're a very small town. And in small towns, I always think everybody cares for everybody. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody collaborates here, so everybody's on the same page to reach the same goal for the kids. We have more of a community type atmosphere here. And what I really like is all of the different avenues that we go through to meet the needs of the parent as well as the student. These parents see a welcoming place, they see a small place, they see a safe place, and they see a place where there's opportunity for their kids. We are the only full service community school district in the state of Minnesota. To me, what it means to be a community school is just that we support the entire student. You know, we don't think of our students as children for only eight hours a day who only exist to complete our tasks or to excel in school. You know, we think of them as whole people. We are always there for you 100% of the day, 24-7. Our teachers will be there on weekends or their late evenings, and it's very much a community school. If we're meeting those basic food needs, medical needs, eyeglass needs, whatever kinds of needs that they have, when they walk in this door, they are ready, but not only are they ready to learn, they're excited to learn. A lot of what we've done, I talk about that, is with partnerships. Grants and collaborations are great, and they're critical to how we survive. But the fact of the matter is grants run out, grants are for specific things, so the core programs, our regular education, are the areas that need the funding from elsewhere. Every year that I've been here, the class sizes have been getting a tiny bit bigger, a tiny bit bigger, a tiny bit bigger, because we don't have the money to hire another teacher to reduce those class sizes. The bigger our classes get, the less that we are able to meet each individual's needs. We just, we can't, 33 kids is a lot of needs to meet. A lot of students, when they come into seventh grade, when you, when you think back to high school and you were in, in biology class, it's like, we're going to dissect rocks. I mean, that's what they want to do. Um, because of cuts, I've had to maybe get four that we use as a demo, so I'll have 30 kids looking at one frog because frogs are about 8 to $10 a piece. Right now, um, we need new reading materials, and we do not have the finance to support that, so we're making do with what we have. Now I have less than $5 a student, and it does need to pay for things like scissors and um, pencils and glue and paint and clay and glaze, and it adds up so that in the end I end up buying a good portion of the supplies. We spend a lot of time looking at dollars, we look at programs, we look at laws, we look at mandates, we look at all these requirements, and the bottom line is there are children coming to school every day, and they have no idea, they're not part of the political process. They're children that are coming to school expecting that we're going to give them our best, and that's what we're about. We just have really good students here, and that's what draws me here, and that's why I tell my students every single day, this is not a job to me. I love coming here because of them. I was eligible to retire three years ago, and I just, I just don't want to end my career. I love what I do. I love teaching. The staff here are second to none. Families and students here are second to none, and I absolutely love coming to work with them every single day. These kids are our future, and they deserve the best we can give them. And I can tell you that the, the teachers here at Old Brown are working very, very hard to do that, and we really need and uh, hope for the support of the whole community because it really does take everyone to make this work best for the kids.